Hey everyone, here we have an example where we are going to be solving a quadratic equation. Whenever you are presented with a quadratic equation, you wanna make sure it's equal to zero before you try any of the normal techniques. One tried and true go-to method is going to be to try to solve such a quadratic by factoring. So let's jump in and we're gonna to try to solve this by the AC method with grouping. So quadratic trinomials or the method for factoring a quadratic trinomial can be applied to non-quadratics that are what we call of the quadratic type. That means that this exponent here should be double the exponent here. In this case, it's an invisible one. And then there's no X right over there. We are in that situation, so we can go ahead and try this. In our example, the A equals two, the B is equal to negative five, and the C is equal to negative three. We're going to start off by multiplying A and C. Two times negative three is negative six. One and six, two and three, bottom of the list, B is negative five. Now, we love an example like this, don't we? We do. Why? Because one and six and two and three can both make negative five, but only one of them is the right pair to choose. One and six, two and three, I need it to be negative five. If I wanted negative five, I would use both negative two and negative three, or I would use a positive one and a negative six. But only one of these products will also be negative up here. Which one of those two? There you go. So if you choose the wrong one, it'll look really good, and the factoring by grouping is gonna be like off to a pretty strong star, and then you're gonna fudge it, your brain's gonna autocorrect, and it's gonna switch a minus to a plus just to force it to work and you might not even pick up on it. So gotta be careful. So we're gonna go ahead and get this going. So here we have two X squared minus five X minus three equals zero. And the two X squared is really representing your first times first. The negative three is really representing your last times last. I have a middle, not an outer inner. I wanna split that middle and I split it using these two numbers right there. So plus one X and minus six X. The X that I put with those middle um, two terms, the outer inner, should match the X on my middle term in my equation, in this case X. If it were a two and a four, then they would both have X squared. Big place where people like to mess up. Now, what you can do is you would factor from here by grouping. I go into a lot of detail factoring by grouping on other examples for instance for number 17 a couple examples ahead one two examples ahead 2x squared plus x minus 10 equals zero i go into detail there and mm, probably somewhere else i'm going to go more into the shortcut method instead here so i'm going to go from this i'm going to set up the double bubble outer and inner okay outer and inner are going to be 1x plus one X is gonna be outer or inner, and then minus six X is going to be the other. Shortcut, ready? F, first times first is two X squared. First times first needs to give me two X squared. Two is prime, don't have a lot of options, ladies and gentlemen, two X and X it is. Three is also prime, so that means I would either have one and three or three and one. Now, one of them is gonna give me one X, the other is negative six X. This already has a two. It's not gonna give me one X. It can give me six X if I multiply negative six. So I'll make that negative three. And if that's positive one X, that's plus one, or last times last is negative three, also giving me positive one. Guys, if you don't understand what just happened there, please just press pause, go back over here, finish factoring by grouping. Revisit this later. Don't try to force it right now. Maybe revisit it later, okay? Either way, when push comes to shove, it's factored. You have 2x plus 1, and you have, I don't know why I started putting parentheses, and you have x minus 3. Once you have a polynomial equation factored, we go into we go into um, zero product property, which means we're setting each piece equal to zero. If you did it over here, you probably would have wound up when it was all finished with the X minus three coming out front. No, I lie. 
Do I? No, I'm right. Am I? Minus 3, X, minus 3, they both, yes, I'm right. X minus 3. No, 2X minus 1 would come out front. I can't do it in my head right now. Wow, not good. Don't listen to me, but listen to me. X minus 3 also will equal 0. Subtract 1 from both sides. 2X is equal to negative 1. Divide by 2. X equals negative 1 over 2. A little squished. There it is. Add 3. Add 3. X equals 3. There you go. There you go. If you want to use quadratic formula for this example, you can. It's absolutely not necessary. Um, I also go into two examples ahead. You'll see 2x squared plus x minus 10 equals 0. I solve it both by factoring. I go into more detail breaking apart grouping versus the shortcut method. And I also do a bonus video where I solve it by quadratic formula if for some reason, you know, you're like, Try it and true, I'm just gonna use quadratic formula. I did an example showing you how you would fully simplify and get two answers like this from quadratic formula, so go find that. Good luck, okay? So I hope this was helpful. Thumbs up if you love math. Thumbs down if you only kinda like it as a friend. Have a good night, bye.